Okay, let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning on our webinar on graphics animation. Um, it's roughly a 20 minute presentation and then we'll go into questions and answers. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to put them into the window on your screen and we will get them at the end. Okay, we'll get started. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Let's have a look at our agenda for today. We'll start by discussing the Horner OCS graphics specifications. We'll talk about importing graphics and we'll discuss the static bitmap object. We'll show you how to use the symbol library and we'll show you the animation object. There will be demonstrations throughout and as always, we'll finish with a live Q&A session. We'll start by talking about the OCS graphics specifications. In order to make your OCS look great, you'll need to know some specifications first. You need to know the resolution and aspect ratio of the unit that you're using. You need to know the color depth, which is how many colors that the OCS displays. You need to know the file format, whether it's bitmaps, JPEGs, or SVGs. Now we'll go through some of our product specifications. We'll start with our entry-level products that have monochrome screens. The X2 and the XLE can display monochrome graphics on their 2-inch displays with 128 by 64 pixel resolution. The XLT can also display monochrome graphics on its slightly bigger display with 160 by 128 pixel resolution. Our other products in the Micro OCS series have full color screens that are bigger with more resolution. They support 15-bit color which gives you vivid and detailed graphics. The resolutions and aspect ratios vary from product to product. With the XL series, the aspect ratios are more consistent. All of these units support 15-bit color depth, with the XL Plus 15-inch also supporting over 16 million colors. It's important to check your product specifications before designing graphics for your controller. Seascape currently supports the use of bitmaps, JPEGs, and SVGs, which work with all of our products. To start developing graphics in Seascape, you need to open the Seascape Graphics Editor. There are 30 objects that you can use to build your screens, including switches, graphs, and gauges. We'll be discussing the static bitmap object. This is an object that you can use to import your own graphics or artwork into a screen on the OCS. You can use this object by clicking on its icon and dragging it to size on your screen. Once it's been placed, you can double click on the object to view the static bitmap properties. The first step is selecting which graphic you want to use. You can select JPEGs, bitmaps, and SVG files. When you click on one of the buttons, you'll see a dialog box to select the file that you want to import. If you're using the symbol library, then you can pick your image from the symbol library which we'll talk about in more detail later. Once you've selected your graphic, there are some configuration options you can use. The Scale to Fit checkbox will automatically scale your graphic to match the size of the box drawn. It is very useful, but you will get better results scaling the image yourself before you bring it into Seascape. There is also the Number of Colors drop-down. You want to match the number of colors here to the number of colors in the image that you're bringing in. If your program isn't low on graphic space, we recommend picking larger numbers for the best result. We also have transparency configuration. We don't currently support file formats with built-in transparency. However, you can check a checkbox in Seascape to treat the background of your image as transparent. Seascape will estimate what should be transparent based on the image and implement it for you. Depending on how many colors are in your graphic, you may need to adjust your sensitivity slider to get the best result. Here are some things you can do to get the best quality for your graphics. Firstly, you should use an independent graphics editor for scaling the image to the size you need. Don't scale the object in Seascape, you should do this before importing the image. You should also use that program to adjust the number of colors to 16 bits, which is all the OCS can display. If you use bitmap format, then Seascape won't have to perform any graphic conversion on the file. This will display your graphic as accurately as possible. 
Now we'll demonstrate importing graphics in Seascape. I've developed a simple demo program here. I want to import my company logo and place it on the main screen. We're working with an EXLW, which I'll switch to now. This is my main screen. Instead of this being plain text, we'll place the Horner Automation logo here. Now we'll go back to my computer. Before we dive into Seascape, we'll look at the graphic file that we want to import. So here we have a high resolution JPEG of our company logo. We want to make sure it will look great right on the unit. Let's right click the image and select properties. Let's look at the resolution of this file. I'll go to the details. As you can see, it's 2134 by 525 pixels. I've got an EXL6 which uses 800 by 480 resolution. So I'm going to need to scale this image down significantly. It's also using 24-bit color. If I don't manually convert from 24-bit to 16-bit, then Seascape will have to do that for me. So let's edit this file before you bring it into Seascape. I'll right click here on the file and I will select Edit with Paint 3D. Paint 3D is a free basic editor that's included with Windows 10. I'm just going to use Paint 3D to rescale this image. I'm going to go to the canvas section here. I'll make sure my aspect ratio is locked and resize image with canvases is checked. And then I'm going to change the resolution of the image. I've got 800 pixels wide to work with. So let's say I want to make this graphic 720 pixels. And you can see it's rescaled the graphic. So it's done all of the graphics estimations. Now I'm going to save this file, so I'll go to menu here, I'll hit save as, and I'll save as an image. I can select some different formats. I'm going to use bitmap format as it works best with Seascape. I'll name it EXLW and then I'll hit save. I didn't have the option to change the color depth from 24 bit color to 16 bit color, but Seascape can deal with that. I would normally use Adobe Photoshop which gives you this option, but I wanted to demonstrate this with Windows free photo editing software instead of a paid program. So let's go into Seascape. When we're editing graphics, we need to go to the view and edit screen area in Seascape. I'll maximize my screen. We'll get rid of this text on screen. I'm going to go to the static bitmap object and I'll click and drag it to around the size I want. It doesn't have to be exact. I'll double click on the object. Now I'm going to uncheck scale to fit so the graphic will be in its native resolution. I'll select 32,000 colors because it's as close as I can get to the 24 bit color range that my image has. Now I'm going to hit the pick bitmap button and I'll find the file that I just saved. Once I found it, I'll select it and hit open. As you can see, it looks a bit distorted, but don't worry, that's just a limitation in the Seascape preview window. It's going to look perfect when we hit OK. It looks like it's been imported pretty well. Let's say I want to make it transparent. So I'll double click on the object again, and then I'm going to click Treat Background as Transparent. This turns out really well because none of the colors in the graphic are close to white, which is the background color being removed. So I don't need to mess with the sensitivity slider at all. If the background was blue instead of white, I would either need to change the color of the background before I brought the file into Seascape, or I'd play with this sensitivity slider until it looked right. I'll hit OK, and now as we can see, the background is transparent. We'll download this to the EXLW that I've connected here, so I'll hit download. We'll show our overhead camera after the download has finished. So here is our OCS, the download is completed, and as you can see, the logo looks exactly how I wanted it to. I've got good detail in the logo, and it's not distorted. So that's how to bring an image into an OCS through the static bitmap object. Now we'll discuss the Seascape symbol library. This is an optional package that is developed by a third party company, which contains over 4000 professionally drawn objects of an industrial theme. All these objects are integrated into Seascape and available to use in your project. Seascape with Symbols fully integrates the symbol library with Seascape. 
Using the symbol library is similar to using a regular static bitmap object, but you must have the symbol version of Seascape installed on your computer before you start. So under the static bitmap object properties, you select pick symbol, and after a few seconds, the symbol library will appear. Once it's open, you'll have many categories of symbols. When you select a category, you'll see all the different illustrations and artwork that are associated with that category. You can select the graphic you want, and then change the colors of the foreground and background of the graphic. When you're done editing the graphic, double click on the item to finish the configuration process. Now we'll discuss how to get the best results with Symbol Library. Because many of these images have lots of shading, we recommend selecting 32,000 for the number of colors. We also don't recommend selecting scale to fit. You should allow it to be drawn on your screen in its native size. And then if you need to adjust the size afterwards, you can. Next, if you're using transparency, we recommend setting a background color not used anywhere in your graphic so that Seascape can easily distinguish the background from the foreground. Now let's demonstrate importing symbols in Seascape. We're in Seascape now. Let's go back to the graphics editor. We'll maximize it again, and we'll go to a pre-configured screen where I'm just doing simple motor control. There's nothing advanced about my example. We're going to focus on bringing in symbols. Instead of just having a color in the background, I want to show a picture of the motor, which we'll find using the symbol library. I'm going to select the static bitmap object, I'll drag it to the appropriate size I need, and then I'll double click on it. I'm going to pick my maximum amount of colours, and I'm not going to scale it to fit initially. Then I'm going to hit pick symbol. This is the symbol library, it sometimes takes a few seconds to load. Here are all the different categories. I'm looking for an image of a motor, which I'll find in the motor section here. I found an image I want to use, so I'll select that. But let's say I want a grey coloured motor. In the lower right hand side of the dialog, instead of the fill being the original fill, I'm going to select shaded fill, and under fill colour, I'm going to change it to grey. Let's see how that looks. I think it looks good. Now that the motor looks how I want it to, I'll double click on it to finish the configuration. Again, I'm not scaling it, I'm letting it maintain its original aspect ratio. However, I will treat the background as transparent. Let's see how that looks. It looks okay. I can go in under the background colour here, and I could make that background colour something vastly different from grey. So that when I treat the background as transparent, I can manually select that colour to make sure Seascape has an easy time making the background transparent. I'll hit OK here, and now I have the motor in its original aspect ratio and its original size. I can make it a little bigger or smaller at this stage, or I can move some things to make more room for the motor. OK, let's see how that looks. I'm going to close that, and then hit the download button. We'll show how it looks in the overhead view now. I'll navigate to my main motor screen. I think it looks pretty good. Well, what if we want the photo to change depending on what was happening on the machine? Well, we can do that using the animation object. The animation object is an object in the Seascape graphics editor that allows users to display a different graphic at any given time, depending on a variable value. As the variable changes, the image that's displayed also changes. This can be used to illustrate the status of a device, or whether an object is in motion. Using it is very similar to using the static bitmap object. You click on the animation object, and drag it to the approximate size that you want on the screen. Then you double click it to access its properties. The first thing you have to do is assign a variable to the object. The OCS will read this variable to determine which graphic it displays. When you assign your variable, you also need to assign how many bits that variable is. You can use bit type variables for this object. Next, you have to select a frame number, which is the number of graphics associated with that object. The frame number starts at 0, 
So if you have a simple on-off variable showing two separate images for when your device is on or off, then your frame number will be 0 for the first image and 1 for the second. You can have up to 50 frames associated with the same variable. Once you've selected the frame value, you'll pick the image you're using for that particular frame. You'll then select the file or the symbol that you're using for that frame. Once you've selected your graphic, Follow the same rules for configuration that we used for the bitmap. Once you've finished configuring your first frame, frame number 0, then you'll configure your other frames. To do this, you just select the next frame number and repeat all of the previous steps. There's also a touch selection available with the animation object. If the touch option is selected and the operator presses that object on the screen, then the action of the operator pressing the object will cause the frame to change. Now we'll demonstrate the animation object in Seascape. So we're back in Seascape. The first thing we'll do for my motor is make the motor change appearance when the motors are running. This is just a simple start-stop circuit that controls my motor running. Let's go to our user interface through our graphics editor, and we'll navigate to the motor control screen. Instead of using just a static bitmap, let's draw a new animated object on the screen. We'll drag and drop it to its approximate size, and then double click to access its properties. I have to assign a variable to it. I'm going to select the motor run variable, which is a 1-bit variable. The OCS is going to monitor motor run, and when motor run is 0, it will display the image I select now. Let's select a symbol frame from the symbol library. The motor is still displayed, but when the motor is off, I don't want it to be green. Let's change our shading from green to grey. Alright, now that I'm done, I'll double click here. We won't select scale to fit, we'll treat it as transparent, and this is frame number 0. Frame number 1 is going to be displayed when the motor running variable is 1. So let's pick the symbol frame for that. We'll select this green motor for when the motor is running. I'll double click it. Let's make the background transparent and make sure everything else looks good. We actually need to increase our number of colours. We don't want 16 colours because there's quite a bit of shading and we're pulling the background layer out. We want to make sure we use a lot of colours, so I'll change the colours to 32,000 for frame number 1. We'll check that frame number 0 is all good. It seems to be properly configured. So we'll hit OK, and everything looks good. I'm going to delete this object here, and I'll center the animation object a little bit. Now let's download this program to our OCS, and see what this looks like in the OCS once it's downloaded. Here's my controller. We'll show our motor control screen here. Now when we hit start, the motor changes color. So we've used an animated bitmap on the screen. Now we'll also show motion in this application to demonstrate to an operator that something is moving. In addition to the motor control, I also have a gear drive control with a similar start-stop arrangement. In this case, I also have a slow speed and a fast speed on the drive gear. Let's add a graphic here that will indicate that the gears are turning when the drive is moving. We're back in Seascape. In the symbol library, there are pairs of graphics that simulate motion when you alternate between them. But in order for that motion to be simulated, you have to change the value of the variable that is being used to animate those particular images. What I've done here in this logic is whenever the motor is actually running, if the speed is set to fast, this bit will turn on and off every 100 milliseconds. If the speed is set to slow, then I'm going to alternate that bit at a much slower rate. Let's go to the screen editor now. I'll navigate to the gear motor screen, we'll select our animated bitmap object, and we'll drag it to our approximate size. We have to assign a variable, and in this case, we'll assign our drive animation bit. This bit's only purpose is to turn on and off to allow us to animate the turning of the gears. We'll select 32,000 colors, and we won't check scale to fit. We'll hit the symbol frame here for frame 0. 
The gear images that I'm looking for are in this machining category of the symbol library. Here they are, these two gears here. I'll select the first one. I'm OK with the color, so I'll double click to confirm the image. We'll treat the background as transparent, and the colors look good to me. Now let's configure frame 1. We'll pick another symbol frame. We're back in the symbol library, and we'll pick the second image this time, which is slightly rotated from the first. That's the only difference. Again, we'll make sure our background is treated as transparent. We also need to configure the variable size of one bit. Let's hit OK. Alright. So we've drawn a gear here, that will turn whenever this variable alternates between 0 and 1. Let's make a second gear by copying and pasting this particular object, just so it looks a bit better. We'll download this to our controller, now we'll show the view of the downloaded program in the OCS. So we're looking at our controller, let's navigate past the motor screen to our gear drive control. We're set for slow currently. Let's see what happens when we hit start. Those gears are turning very slowly to indicate that we have motion. If I switch the speed to fast, you can see there's a big increase in speed. So that demonstrates the animation object. That wraps up today's tutorial. Thank you for attending today's tutorial. The Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay, um, I'm not seeing anything in just yet. Um, so as usual, I will take you to my screen, which hopefully you can all see now. Um, so that is today's webinar, and we have integrating audio next week, followed by J1939, and the whole list up until the end of December. Um, all registrations are there if you do want to join us, which would be great. And if you do have any suggestions at any point, then we will take those on board. Um, I believe we have a question in. Um, can you set some parameters in the web app? Um, in what sense, what parameters are you looking to set? Can you follow up in a, with an email to tech support on that one? And I'll go through what you mean. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, okay, other than that, thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, we hope to see you again next week.